Okay, we are in P.5, day two, factoring polynomials. We already talked about factoring trinomials, general trinomials, when A equals 1, meaning we just had like x squared plus 2x plus 7, or that really wouldn't work, but, um, or x squared minus 5x plus 6. Um, that wouldn't work either, but what I'm saying is the only ones we factored were had A was 1, so it was very simple. Today we're going to be factoring polynomials like 2x squared plus 3x plus 7, or 5x squared minus 8x plus 2, something like that, where A isn't 1. It's not too much harder, just a few more steps, okay? So, always check to see if there's a GCF. And then if there is, factor it out. If there's not, you're ready to factor the trinomial. The steps to factor a general trinomial when A is not 1. Okay, A times C, find all the factors. Rewrite B, 2 by 2, GCF, GCF, GCF again. Woo! All right, sound familiar? Um, we've done all of this. The only thing new are these two steps. And we've kind of done them, we just didn't have to take into account A like we do now. So let's do a few and you'll get used to my little song here. All right, it says factoring a trinomial whose leading coefficient is not one. In this particular trinomial, A is eight, B is negative 10, C is negative three. You can tell A is not one, which means we can't do the easy way we learned last week. So. Step one says A times C. And don't, don't, you can look at signs, but I promise that I'll take care of that in the next couple steps. A is eight, C is three, eight times three is 24. Okay, then it's gonna say, find all the factors. Oops. And we have to find all the factors. So for 24, I can make 24, one times 24, two times 12, three times eight, 4 times 6, 5 is a decimal, 6 times 4, we already have the pair. And just like we did when A is 1, I'm trying to make B. Remember, everybody wants to be at the B. Alright, so I'm trying to find a pair that I could make 10 out of. Again, don't worry about the sign for now. If I add 1 and 24, I get 25. Subtract, I get 23. Nope. Add 2 and 12, I get 14. Subtract 2 and 12, I get 10. Yep. Now be careful. This doesn't happen often. But quickly, most of the time, people just, they find it and they stop. Okay? Keep going. Add 3 and 8 is 11. Subtract 3 and 8 is 5. Nope. Add 4 and 6 is 10. I can make it two different ways. This is not very common. This is quite rare. Okay, when there's more than one way to make it, you have to look how you'd have to get it. To get 10 this way, I would have to use subtraction, which means my signs would have to be different. If I used 6 and 4, I'd have to add in order to get 10. C will tell you what to do. If C is plus, then you use the plus pair. If C is minus, then you use the subtract pair. Always works. Always. I've never heard it, seen it not work. So my pair is 2 and 12. Okay, all right, next step. Sorry, I wrote all over it. It says rewrite B. What I mean by that is the original function was 8x squared minus 10x minus 3. The note says to rewrite B. Well, I'm telling you, you found out how by making your list, just like we did even when A is 1. I know I'm going to write 10x with a 2x and a 12x. All I have to do is figure out the signs. Well again, remember if c is positive then they both get to be the sign of b. If c is negative then only the bully gets to be. My c is negative so only one of these gets to be just like b and it's the bully. If 2 and 12 were in a fight, 12 is going to win, he's the bully. So he gets to be just like b which means 2x can't be, okay? And then the first and the last term come down just like we didn't do anything to them. We didn't. We still have 8x squared. We still have minus 3. Now, I didn't do anything illegal. 
What is a positive 2x and a minus 12x? It's the same thing as negative 10x. It's like taking a $10 bill from you and giving you two fives. It's still worth the same, it just looks different. And now, my friends, you are right back to what you're already very comfortable. Now we've made our trinomial into a polynomial in four terms, correct? So we are ready to, you know the rest of the song now, two by two, GCF, GCF, GCF again, woo! All right, GCF is just what it sounds like. What is the biggest number that'll go into eight and two? Two. How many X's do they have in common? One. So my GCF is two X. To get what's left, we divide. 8x squared divided by 2x is 4x. Positive 2x divided by positive 2x is positive 1. Yes, they cancel, but in division, that's not 0. That's 1. Something divided by itself is 1, not 0. Okay, so that's done. Now we got a GCF the other side. The biggest number that will go into them is a 3. And remember, we're always going to take this guy's sign. So my GCF is negative 3. To get what's left, we divide. Negative 12x divided by negative 3 would be positive 4x. And negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. And then we're going to GCF again. And remember at this point, if you don't have a matching binomial on both sides of that wall you drew, one of two things is going on. Either you did something wrong or it's prime. Sorry, I'm a little behind on my, there we did the GCF, GCF, so now we're at GCF again, woo. Well, you know now what I just highlighted is the final GCF again. The common binomial is 4x plus one. If I divide by that on both sides, cancel, cancel, what's left, 2x. Cancel, cancel, what's left? Negative 3. Um, 8x squared minus 10x minus 3 equals 4x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. If you doubt it, check it. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times negative 3, negative 12x. Positive 1 times 2x, positive 2x. Positive 1 times negative 3. Negative 3, combine like terms, 8x squared minus 10x minus 3. Did it work? Sure did. You are done. Okay? All right. Let's do another one. Okay? Um, What's the first step is A times C. So we have 6 times 7 is 42. Find all the factors. 1 times 42. 2 times 21. 3 goes in there, mm -hmm. 14, 4 is a decimal, 5 is a decimal, 6 goes in 7, 7 goes in 6, we're starting to repeat, we got them all. I need to make 19, because I need to rewrite B, right? <laughs> Excuse me. If I add 1 and 42, I make 43. Subtract, I make 41. That's not 19. Add 2 and 21, I get 23. Subtract 2 and 21, there's my 19. Quickly scan the other ones to make sure you can't make 19. No, no, we're good. So I need to rewrite B. That's my next step. So I'm going to have 6x squared, well, the original, and thus 19x minus 7. I need to split this. I need to rewrite it using a 2 and 21. Okay? Um, different color. So I'm going to write 2x, 21x, and I'm going to check to see if c is positive or if c is negative. c is negative, which means only the bully. Big bad 21 gets to be just like B. So he's going to take the positive, which means 2 has to take the negative. First and last drop, I have 6x squared on the front, minus 7 on the end. And now we are at 2 by 2. Remember, always keep the sign on the other side of the wall. 
Okay, next we are at GCF. GCF. GCF again. Woo! Okay, so we're going to GCF this side. GCF this side. GCF again. Woo! Alright, over here, the biggest number that will go into both of them is a 2. They have 1x in common, so my GCF is 2x. Divide to get what's left would be 3x minus 1. On this side, the biggest number that goes into both of them is a 7. They don't have x's in common. Take the positive, so my GCF is positive 7, which leaves me 3x minus 1. Look for your common binom, which is... 3x minus 1. If I divide by 3x minus 1 on both sides, cancel, cancel, I'm left with 2x plus 7. 6x squared plus 19x minus 7 equals 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 7. And if you're not sure, check it. Boil it back out. All right. Now, this doesn't look like a general trino because I said general trinos had to go second degree, first degree, constant. Unless both ends are squared and the middle adds up to two. Okay? And other than how the middle is going to look, everything is exactly the same. So my first step is still going to be a times C, don't use the letters, just 2 times 3 is 6. All the factors of 6. 1 times 6, 2 times 3, 3 times 2, we're already repeating. If I add 1 and 6, I would make 7. Subtract, I would make 5. Oh, I already found it, right? I check, no way to make 7 out of that. So my pair is to rewrite 7. Okay, rewrite B, so I have 2x squared instead of a minus 7xy plus 3y squared. I need to split this, and the only thing that's going to look a little different than the last time is it's going to split into 1xy instead of just 1x, and 6xy. Okay, now signs. Again, if C is positive, they both get to be B. If C is negative, only the bully gets to copy B. C is positive, they both get to take the sign in the middle, so they're both negative. And we drop our first and our last. 2x squared plus 3y squared. Okay, and now we are at 2 by 2. And after 2 by 2, we are at GCF. GCF, GCF again, woo, GCF, GCF, GCF again, woo, okay, so on the left hand side, the, they don't have, the biggest number they have in common is a 1, and 1 copy of X, so my GCF is X, divide leaves X minus Y, no, 2X, I'm sorry, 2x minus y. Okay, on the other side, the biggest number they have in common is a 3, and they have a y in common. And I always take the first guy's sign, so my GCF is negative 3y. Divide, I get a positive 2x, because the y's cancel, and a positive 3y divided by a positive 3y is, I mean, 3y squared divided by 3y is just plus, oops, minus y. Alright, then look for your matching binomial for GCF again. Woo. And my GCF again is 2x minus y divided by 2x minus y and I'm left with x minus 3y. That equals 2x squared minus 7xy plus 3y squared. And if you're not sure, then multiply it out. 
pull it back out and check your work. Okay. All right. Hit pause. And we're back. Hopefully you got three. If you did not, let's look at why. First step is A times C. So 3 times 16 is 48. Factors of 48. 1 times 48. 2 times 24. 3 times 16. 4 times 12. 5 no. 6 times 8. 7 no. 8 times 6. We're repeating. I need to make 14 in the middle. I add, I get 49, subtract is 47, add is 26, subtract is 22, add is 18, subtract is 13, add is 16, subtract is 8, add is 14, finally made it. So 6 and 8 are my pair. So I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to split negative, rewrite negative 14x. So 6x and 8x. C will tell me whether both are just the bully. C is positive, so they both get to be the sign of B, which makes them both negative. And we drop the 3x squared and the positive 16 on the end, and we are ready to go 2 by 2. TCF, TCF. And again, woo! Um, in this side, they have a 3x in common. Divide by 3x leaves x minus 2. These two have an 8 in common, no x. Always take his sign, so my GCF is minus 8 or negative 8, which leaves x minus 2. Look for your matching binomial. Found it. So my final answer, my GCF again is x minus 2, divide by x minus 2, and I'm left with 3x minus 8. Okay, back to this trinomial, or state if the trinomial is prime, pause, and we're back. Hopefully you got, and that's number 3. If not, let's look at y. So I do 7 times 20, which is 140, 1 times 140, 2 times 70, 3 is a decimal, 4, 35, 5, 28, there's going to be my 23 if I subtract. You'll get better at it. I mean, there's that better that that possibility that I could make another make it using another B. But all these big numbers, I, I go for it. All right, so my pair is going to be five and twenty-eight. So I'm going to split the middle. So seven x squared, and then I don't know what sign, but five x and twenty-eight x. Look at C to tell you. C is negative, so only the bully gets the middle, and the wimp has to be the opposite. And then bring down minus twenty on the end. Now we're at 2 by 2. GCF, the only thing they have in common is an x. Divide by x, I get 7x plus 5. They have a 4 in common, and I'm going to use a negative. So my GCF is negative 4, which leaves 7x plus 5. My common binomial. 7x plus 5, so my GCF again, divide by 7x plus 5, 7x plus 5 leaves x minus 4, okay? Alright, there's another one for you to practice. Make sure that you get number 1. And so how do you factor trinomial in which 8 is not equal 1? A times C, find all the factors, rewrite B, 2 by 2, GCF, GCF, GCF again, woo -hoo. sing the song, you'll never forget it. Alright, now, factoring the difference of two squares, sorry I jumped over the notes part, 
factoring the difference of two squares. It says if a and b are real numbers, variables or algebraic expressions, then a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. Here's a little song I made up. Bino, bino, plus and mino. Bino, bino, plus and mino. Bino, bino, plus and minus. What are you talking about, crazy lady? All right, let's say that I have x squared minus 9. Do you see how if I took the square root of x squared, I get a perfect x? And the square root of 9 is 3. Don't worry about the negative. Okay? Meaning, I didn't get decimals when I took either one of them. If that is the case, and this is subtraction, it does not work if it's a sum. That's a completely different formula, which we'll talk about later in life. All right? But it, right now, it only works. This technique only works if that's a difference of squares, not a sum of squares. So three things has to happen. The first term has to be perfect, the last term has to be perfect, and the middle term has to, or the middle sign has to be negative. If that happens, watch my song. Bino, bino, plus n, mino. And then your factors in each one are x and 3. One positive, one negative. Done. Okay? So, check three things. Is x squared a perfect square? Yes. Is 4 a perfect square? Yes. Is that a difference? Yes. Bino, bino, plus n, mino. There's my two terms, x and 2, x and 2. Okay, check your three things. The square root of 81 x squared perfect? Yes, it's 9x. Square root of 49 perfect? Yes, it's 7. So bino, bino, plus n, mino. And my two terms are 9x plus 7, 9x minus 7. Okay, two more, x squared minus 81. Square root of x squared is x, perfect. Square root of 81 is 9, perfect. That's a difference, perfect. Bino, bino, plus n, mino. My two terms are x plus 9, x minus 9. Check the 3. Square root of 36x squared, perfect, yes, it's 6x. Square root of 25, perfect, yes, it's 5. Is it a difference? Perfect. Bino, bino, plus n, mino. And my two terms are 6x plus 5, 6x minus 5. Okay? Now, a repeated factorization. Your author can be tricky. I check to see if these are perfect squares. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Perfect. The square root of 81 is 9. Perfect. So, and it's a difference. Perfect. So, bino, bino, plus n, mino. Here's my two terms. x squared plus 9, x squared minus 9. You can't factor the sum of squares. You can, but not yet at your, this point in your math career. But difference of squares will split again into, because look, the square root of x squared is x, perfect. The square root of 9 is 3, perfect. So bino, bino, plus n, mino. Those are my two terms, x plus 3, x minus 3. This one can't be factored, but it's still part of my factors. x to the fourth minus 81 is equal to x squared plus 9 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay? Pause. And we're back. And square root of x squared is x. Square root of 100 is 10. It's a difference. Bino, bino, plus n, bino. The terms are x plus 10 and x minus 10. Okay, this one's pause, and we're back, and the answer is 3 because the square root of 16x to the 4 equals 4x squared, the square root of 81 equals 9, it's a difference, so bino, bino, plus n, mino, my terms are 4x squared plus 9, 4x squared minus 9, which are both perfect squares. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 9 is 3. Now, you can't do anything with the sum of squares, so it stays. But this will be bino, bino, plus n, mino, with these terms. 2x plus 3, 
2x minus 3. So, how do you factor difference of squares? Binom, binom, plus n, binom. And we are done. Have a happy homework, and we will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.